What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Hogwarts Legacy gameplay stream. I'm Chandler Wood, Community Manager here at Avalanche Software, and we've got a lot of really exciting stuff to show you today. But before we get into showing you the game and gameplay, I have a few wonderful guests that, that I need to introduce you to. Uh, first up, we have our community guest host. He brings you the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy content. Uh, he's the local Merlin conspiracy theorist. Uh, guilty as charged, yes. <laughs> One half of Expecto Go, yeah. James Whitehead. Uh, thanks, Chandler. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> I'm James Whitehead of Expecto Go, bringing you guys the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy <laughs> content. And uh, I am one half of Expecto Go, the better half, uh, my wife Sue, uh, represents that other half. So um, I'm excited to be here, and thank you, uh, Avalanche Software, for inviting me. I cannot wait to go over this gameplay. I just got to <laughs> say that. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, and we've got two people from the studio, just two of the many people bringing this thing together, uh, the magic of Hogwarts Legacy. Game director, Alan Tu. Hello, everyone. And senior environment artist and Hogwarts expert, Boston Madsen. So thank you for, for taking time out of your very busy schedules right now to sit down with us to help us show everybody gameplay. Uh, so what we're going to be showing you today, first, the character creator, because you're, it's your legacy and <laughs> you have to create yourself when you get into, uh, to, to get into Hogwarts and bring your whole authentic self to Hogwarts. So we're going to show you that character creator. Then we're going to dive into a tour of Hogwarts and it is it's just a small tour of Hogwarts, right? Because <laughs> Hogwarts is huge. Hogwarts is really big. Uh, so uh, we're going to be showing you a little bit, but it's still a lot. So, <laughs> and finally, ending up with uh, combat. A little taste of combat, a little taste of how all that works. Let's um, go. Let's just go. a little taste, yeah. Uh, so we're excited to get there. But again, first and foremost, we need to get into this character creator. And James, with you here, we wanted to... Uh, let you create this character. So, Andrew, who is going to be doing all of our gameplay capture today, uh, <laughs> is uh, going to be handing you the controller. Oh my gosh. All right, I won't break anything. <laughs> all right, so what are we looking at right here on this screen? Um, these are your presets. So a lot like uh, other games, there's there's some initial settings that you can put up Put, uh, choose for your character mm -hmm. um, that just kind of get them into like the ballpark of what you want to be, who you want to be, and what you want to change. Oh man. And then once you're in that ballpark, all the other tabs let you dial that in, uh, be exactly who you want to be. It's our, our goal with this is to make sure that for anyone that fantasized about bringing themselves to the school for yeah. the very first time, yeah. that they feel like they have the options in order to represent who they are and, and essentially bring themselves to Hogwarts or whatever character they want to bring to Hogwarts. Oh my God, and options galore. Uh, do you mind if I try to put myself in here right quick? It's all about you Okay, today. okay, 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 all right, all right. So, oh, okay, yeah, that's me, that's me. We're here, we're here, that's me right there. All right, so let's, <laughs> that's step one. We're so, pretty close, but let's like, let's look at, let's look at everything uh, okay, here. Okay, let's you know, go over Play here. around with some of these options, like really. All right, so what are we looking at with this option over here with the tab? I see face stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the different faces that you saw in the, in the previous screen, all those mm -hmm. faces are are choices that you have here. So you can, now you're just kind of getting into the details in yeah. your face shape, in your skin color. Um, and then because we knew a lot of people going right in are gonna want it right away, even yeah. though it's an option later in the game, yeah. uh, you can collect different types of glasses, put them on later. Uh, we give you some options right up front if you wanna have glasses for your character. Oh man, oh my gosh, look at the structure of the faces with this. Wow, you guys thought of every crazy. I like that. I don't think my face is that skinny, but I think we'll go with that. I think we'll go that route. Uh, and down here is this. Those are your glasses this there. Gla yeah. Oh, so we started. We could we could go Harry Potter if we want. Off the job. <laughs> oh man! And this is just some of the options, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, so through the course board. of the game, there's a lot. There's a lot of different uh, options that you'll keep unlocking. Okay. So as part of kind of like gear for the character, there's lots of different classes. There's even masks. There's all kinds of things uh, over the course of the game. I like how it's all Victorian era though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. Such a good call. Such a good call. Oh my gosh. All right. So now, oh my. Oh, we can go fleek on this one with the hair. <laughs> I spend a lot of time here, just like dreaming about my different characters. And oh my gosh, the pony. 
I, the thing I'm always amazed by whenever I see any aspects of Hogwarts Legacy's character creator is just the texture. And like you even adding the bounce with the hair moving around. Yo, that kind of looks like Hermione a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna just like Fred. I'm not Fred. And we can just go, can I go like Tonks purple or green a little bit? Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Oh, I like that. That is cute. Oh, <laughs> okay, so uh, little behind the scenes. I used to have this type of hair like way, way, way back. But it wasn't purple. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted uh, silver tips, so that was the closest I got to any color, but oh my gosh, this is so cool. So you literally can bring yourself, like it's, it's a myriad of textures and different hairstyles here. All right, so now we're getting over here to uh, play around with some of the- These are more subtle options. Okay. We've got freckles, moles, um, different things like uh, when it comes to your complexion, like darker eyes, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. like some shading on the cheeks. Oh man. You guys literally thought of it <laughs> with this. Yeah, I do have a bit of fun with that. And then the scars are, are one of those options where, um, you know, Harry had his own unique star, yeah. scar, but you can come in with Yours. different scar options. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Look at that. I didn't even see that. Oh, those are my favorite. The, the, the eyebrow scars. Yeah, yeah. Love those. Love yeah. those. Yeah. <laughs> you look kind of like, classic. Yeah. You look kind of just like tough. <laughs> so now we're over here. Oh man, this, you guys, this is so sick. So again, getting more subtle here, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. really like dialing in that face to just really <laughs> get, get, get yeah. your. I don't know how uh, revealing like I want to be with my facial uh, features now. Just like, yeah, I kind of have a big face. Yeah, my eyebrows kind of sit kind of low. <laughs> But I mean, literally, you have so many options just starting the game. I feel like I'm going to be here like forever. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> and then this this final tab here, this is where you kind of bring your whole character together. You know, this is where you finalize everything. You're not choosing your house here. Okay. That's not yet. That uh, was a theory. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, here's where you bring, uh, you, you choose voice one or voice two, which is more kind of a masculine or a feminine one, voice. Man. And then even within I that, changing your pitch, oh, with the, the pitch slider. Oh, it's a subtle slider, but, yeah. but you can hear it. Concerned about. That was quite something. And so you can kind of make out the differences. But yeah, you choose which kind of voice that you want. Uh, you'll be selecting your difficulty here. For today, we'll just go normal because okay. Andrew's going to be uh, taking us through some of the experiences with combat later. And we can talk a little more about difficulty, yeah, with, with combat and how that plays in. That but but I think the, the important thing here is like if, if for people who aren't gamers, especially, right. story mode is a way to get into this without being worried about like, oh, do I need to be good at games? Like, no, just enjoy this game. It's and I will put expecto and then go. Uh, <laughs> we're good, we're good, awesome. And then uh, whether you want to be witch or wizard. <laughs> Amazing. What'd you think, character creator? We're good? I'm good. I'll let, yo, let's explore Hogwarts and let's get into some combat. All right, through the magic of uh, using, using a dev kit, we're gonna be loading up a, a save a little later in. Um, so that we can show you more about Hogwarts and give you that taste of combat. All right, Andrew's got some gameplay pulled up for us here. We are uh, starting out, James, there there you are. You're wearing the House Fanatic <laughs> robes uh, from, the, from the account linking. Thank you, thank you, I, I do look good. Uh, and this is our first look at the Hufflepuff common room, I'm assuming. I mean, the, dorm room. The dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. But well, Alan, what are, we, what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah, so um, right now we know there's been a lot of questions about uh, about, about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay. okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravello is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. 
on the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not going to be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, <laughs> like what are all the spells and what I, can we I do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do want to make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. And then uh, on the left side, that thing that has the L1 button next to it, uh -huh. that's another thing where we don't want to spoil, but basically that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of magical tools that you're going to be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. Okay, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health, and basically there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of mini maps because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the mini map oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. of okay. our HUD. You really that's... immerse yourself. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, <laughs> Very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out into. We, we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set yeah. <laughs> sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. So you can customize that experience right away. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. This, all, okay. the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the <laughs> it's fireplace. Kind of, it's kind of real earthy vines. Yeah. Right? It's very, very earthy. Which is which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah. right? Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw is air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. We wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So if it feels earthy, we've got a little earth and passageway. That's, that's what we were... Hopefully, yeah. it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're going to be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects though. Like, looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. It's tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's going to make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably called Revealio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up in okay. the corner. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we had to ask ourselves, what? <laughs> <laughs> Continue, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> there may be something you may or may not be able to tickle there. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our game, we had to answer the question, you know, we're a late fifth year. What does that mean? How do we catch up to the other students? Okay, okay. And so we have an answer to that question, and, and it's given to you by the staff. So there's something that we call the Wizard's Field Guide that's granted to you early on in the game. And the Wizard's Field Guide is how, how you actually work on catching up with the other students. So Andrew, if you hit pause for me up here, before you push forward a little bit, you can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your wizard's field guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid yeah. over it. Right? Okay, okay. And you can see that on your level as well. So that the field guide has this magical property of looking out into the world around you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's on loan from the Ministry of Magic and the professors so have cool. granted it to you as a late fifth year student is because they want it to help you catch up to the other kids. Mm -hmm. And its magical property is to discover different opportunities to learn and grow all around you. So the way it works is as you discover gameplay in the game, 
it actually recognizes that as a challenge, which is kind of On the bottom. locked into there. Okay. And Andrew, if you go in there, you'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. And you can see field guide pages are on there yeah, as well. Yeah, 1%, so, we, uh, yeah, we unlock that one field guide page. Yeah. That, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school mm -hmm. and kind of hides itself with different types of challenges and different things to do around the school <laughs> that you're that actually going so cool. to interact with to help you grow as a wizard and practice your spells. And so that thing that we just saw is not just a field guide challenge and a way to earn yeah. XP. It's also something that uh, that players can use to learn about the school as they're traveling around. They spot these little secret facts and they can kind of play a little bit of a game discovering all of them and they're there are, there are over a hundred field guide pages just in Hogwarts alone. Oh, so. A little oh. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. We're not gonna... <laughs> Circular staircase. All, all the portraits. The yeah. And I did notice the flu flame just ignite right there, which was so cool. Yeah. Oh man. Fast travel points there. House hour glasses. We had to. <laughs> I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? Oh, they're gorgeous, but but that they're they're just like in the books. Yes, right it's next to the to Great Hall. Lore. It's a nod no. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the yeah, game. We, it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but yeah. but we nod to them as as part of the narrative. Over to the right part of there, the Andrew world. was teasing, that's the uh, Great, Great Hall over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there. We're, he's just kind of like, ah, ah. No. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page. You know, just again, showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and, that's a shot straight from the trailer too. Just that part right there, I, I recognize that. I might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, um, and, and this must be summertime because I notice these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of. I get surprised by it all the time. <laughs> it's a sentient that was a magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh man, and we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate, just to kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle's been here for hundreds of years. So just kind of <laughs> the moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it. And oh my gosh. That landscape, that this Scottish. This location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR. And yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm gonna tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> oh my oh. God. But this is uh, th this grand entryway right here coming down into uh, a really kind of central area. Yeah, we're coming upon the central hall and we pointed out the greenhouse outside mm -hmm. and, and we'll notice when we get down there that it's on the right. This and is a big hub of the school. Like it, it's a big castle, but um, it is designed so you shouldn't get very lost. This is kind of a grand central station. <laughs> I love that. that. I each love direction, that. you know, it's green over there, so the greenhouse is over there. Transfiguration courtyard, you know, library straight ahead. So it's kind of a the hub oh my of God. a lot of the castle. Even the color visually, you can just tell, okay, green, oh, green greenhouse. That way. Oh my God. I should, a lot of it will be subconscious, but yeah. it'll help you really feel, learn the castle and mm -hmm. feel like you know your way around. That's, that's not to say that it's easy to learn. All of us here still get pretty lost in it, it on a daily a basis. It it's is. a castle. It's a... Great point. <laughs> I love that Andrew's uh, definitely teasing a lot of things here. I'm noticing he's swinging the camera this way and that. Is... <laughs> yeah. He's got this grin on his face over there that's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm from doing. the reveal trailer, that, that dragon. Oh my gosh. This is another location where the students will gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an opportunity uh, to uh, talk to somebody, get a, get a yeah. quest giver here.
Is everything all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumour is that a former headmistress, Professor Moll, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. So those kind of side quests are really, it's a cool way to interact you with to your fellow students, with perhaps other teachers, with, you know, various things like that, as well as teach you some more of the secrets of Hogwarts, I think. There's, there's <laughs> a little case, bit of that. In this case, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it, the students are a way to kind of like flesh out the school opportunities around it, what, what we can do. And then those interactions, uh, different interactions with different characters uh, can also offer different choice points for the player. And then some of those things uh, can can affect things game-wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game. Um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice guy or just being a jerk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So sure. the scale really varies, but, but, uh, but those opportunities exist for the player. Wow, look at this. This is the Dada Defense Against the Dark Arts. Power. <laughs> Power, which uh, th this is one of my favorite locations in in the castle. Just visually, you come in here and just the the richness of it's this area very is very iconic, uh, very unique to anywhere else in the castle. Somebody else that we can talk to, uh, notably a, a younger student. Yeah, um, she looks like a first year or an eleven year old. Are you all right? Don't you know who I am, Zenobia Noak, the girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Everyone hates you. Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies and spoil sports. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no talent moon mind. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. I was hoping someone would want to play. Are you familiar with gobstones? Little balls, like marbles. Grand game. And if you lose, they spray you with a foul smelling liquid. I haven't much interest in a game that sprays you with odors. Only if you lose, which I never do. Or at least, not often. <sighs> People can be so cruel. Just because they're sprayed all over with smelly gobstone spit, it's their own fault for losing. Imelda is one of the worst losers. Everett and Astoria are terrible as well. And now those poor losers have taken my gobstones and hidden them in very high places all over the school. Sounds as if you caused the smelly situation and they responded accordingly. I didn't make the rules. Anyway, I can't work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone, perhaps a selfless and talented fifth year to help me. I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate the help. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I, I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, <laughs> you can feel for her, you can be a jerk to her, you can be like, gobstone sounds awful. It sounds like you're just mean. Like, uh, Yeah, and, and your opportunities to be mean there aren't over. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they continue. Uh, that's but, a good example of the... Gob gobstones, too. I know people are going to ask. Gobstones, uh, gobstones playable? They, may, may, they mentioned it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, gobstones is one of the things that is not playable in the game. Um, I know we've we've had to rip the bandaid off on a few things. I, honestly, the, it's both an it's an amazing thing on the franchise. How many things about this like 
like speak to us as fans and that we want to turn into gameplay. And and there were calls that we had to make over the course of production of kind of like which things we will and won't include in the bucket. Yeah. Stones, just kind of for the overall Wizard's of the Chess. Yeah. Those are things that aren't featured. Aren't featured. Yeah. They're featured within the world. I, right? I'm glad they're mentioned. They're a part of the wizarding world. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time there was something that life. we, we re re regretted because we couldn't include it, we also tried to figure out a way to make sure that it was included in the narrative, mm. included in the stories, mm. make sure that there's a way to kind of like acknowledge it, touch it, you know, and, and make it feel like it's definitely part of the world. And I know here too, <laughs> I, we're, I we're like, <laughs> <you're> getting... <laughs> I was like, we're in the Fist Against the Dark Arts class. I recognize that staircase to the left where we were just at, Andrew was walking by. I also recognize the dragon at the very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately we decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there time of day and you know that kind of thing? Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is a day-night yeah. cycle. Yeah. yeah, there is a day-night cycle, but, uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so there's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we, and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities, you get to know the professors. Each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And but, I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... Uh, love it. <laughs> Victorian high, so. you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High yeah. society. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't wonder you like this area because we built it for, like, the purebloods <laughs> and the Slytherins. Oh, and... come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, speaking of lived in, like, the sound effects again, the chatter of the communication that's happening and the footsteps, like, it just makes it feel more alive. Little events like that, the brooms going <laughs> by overhead. I just saw overhead. a broom go by. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. The data tower was one example, but um, no two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the players. Right, right. Help you not get lost. Right. But uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the right. Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and... Personality, I like that. Because yeah, it, it gives, it character. does, like Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character no matter where you go. Yeah. Feels just a little bit different. Yeah. It's sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow full and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Yeah, speaking of characters. <laughs> speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> I feature Poltergeist for too. <laughs> you know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyllshire. We know the fat lady hides there. Hides behind it. That's right. <laughs> the third, third book. <laughs> but sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where the portraits have kind of taken it over. And um, so the sound makes it really unique. All right, I got to call this out here. I know there's been some criticism in the past that uh, our trailers and our gameplay and what we've shown so far has not had enough owls. OK, <laughs> so here we are at the Owlry. We're looking directly at the Owlry to show you all of the owls. It's a Every, lot of owls. It's a lot of owls at the Owlry. I love all the, the owls. fog rolling down that Great way. callback. Great call. <laughs> I, no, I also I also love that as I, I, one of my favorite things about just kind of going around on the outside of the school is that all those things that I see are places that I can mm. go to, that I can visit. I just love that sensation That's knowing so that cool. that is real. That lovely Scottish countryside. <laughs> We're uh, kind of closing out our, our mini tour of Hogwarts. And again, it was a, 
is but a fraction of uh, <laughs> this enormous castle. Oh, uh, <laughs> but we're closing it out here in the clock tower. So another recognizable location. Yeah. But this is where Crossed Wands, which is the secret, not so secret dueling club is <laughs> uh, that the students have put together. Professors definitely know about it, but they think they're being clever. <laughs> uh, and it's run by this uh, Luke and Brattleby here. Who's in a younger year, but we kind of like that this, yeah, that he's running things. Hello, Lucan. May I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all of your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game, this is gonna be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a new way. Uh, for me personally, this was where the game like really starts to open up to the possibilities. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we've set, up a, we've set up a training dummy and this is kind of an activity where you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell followed by four, what we just kind of lovingly refer to as basic shots. Um, <laughs> uh, there are certain spells that the wizards kind of like use, just kind of fling. Andrew's using one now. And you trigger that by tapping R2 on your controller. So you mm -hmm. can see in the corner R2. So if you tap R2, that throws out a basic shot. But that R2 is also your gateway to all of the, the uh, spells that you might slot. So if you okay. hold R2 instead, you can see how the diamond expands. And if we let go, you see how it contracts? Yeah. And so if you hold it again, it expands. And so when it expands and all the spells that you slotted while you're holding that button can now be tapped with your face buttons. Awesome. And not only that, but over the course of the game, you can gain um, additional spell diamonds, up to four additional ones, so that you can slot up to 16 spells, you know, pretty much instantly. And then that helped us um, fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. And, and so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of another feature of the wheel, which is their cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So as you're casting spells, just to make sure that you're not just kind of like repeatedly using one thing over and over and right, over again, right. you can see cooldowns on the spells that he's using uh, on the wheel. And then as you progress through the game, there are different things that can affect things like cooldowns through your talents, uh, different things that okay. allow you to kind of like okay. juggle and adjust and, and wow. update those things. And so if you hold down our R2 and you tap the D-pad, it will switch between your other diamonds if you've unlocked them. And, and that's how you access all those. Oh, man. It looks like you're about to get some action over here. Yeah. So this is, this is a great way to kind of learn how to pull things together, um, so you pull those combos right together. Yeah. Tap, Accio, tap, tap, tap. Awesome. Well done, <laughs> Andrew. And that's just against the dummy, but I mean... Uh... I'd say that's enough practice. You looked good out there. Thank you, Lucan. I say better to discover one's weaknesses during practice than during a duel. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. I think now we can, uh, we can take on something a little more challenging. It's going to shoot back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about uh, some more features of the combat system. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Crossed Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? We're on a PS5 dev kit here, so we're going to be able to kind of pause, the, <laughs> pause yeah. the action yeah. 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 and talk about what you're seeing on the screen, because uh, there is about to be a lot going on. Okay, okay. Um, all right, here you can select uh, if you want to fight with somebody else, some of your classmates. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we're not. We want we want that action to feel a little more frantic <laughs> towards you to really get you that sense of of, uh, of combat. So apparently you've uh, got quite the reputation because they've got you up against yeah, three people. Three, yeah, three, yeah. Off the jump. <laughs> Um, so I can I can explain this uh, just because I know people are going to go into it, but we can probably just kind of jump in. Um, so uh, you're not the only one that has Protego and the ability to deflect. The enemies do too. 
and we actually play with that when it comes to the spell casting. So you notice that there are different colored kind of shields yeah. around the different characters, and you also notice that your spells have different colors on them. So to help players understand kind of like the function of their spells, we're yeah. trying to put them into brackets. So there are damage spells, there are force spells, there are, um, I'm forgetting the other one all of a sudden, control spells. Mm -hmm. And so those things for the player, uh -huh. they wind up also being a color indicator for which which actual spell to use to break the different shields that uh, enemies can use. That's that awesome. way it rewards kind of like that close right. attention that right. you're paying, paying on things. We've got this paused here now, and you can kind of see all the elements on the screen, the, the halo around the avatar's head, yeah. each of the different shields uh, to kind of give us a, give us a breakdown yeah, of what's going on. Give us a breakdown on. of different things that you're saying. <laughs> um, so you notice at the top uh, that we're, we're kind of like calling out which enemy you currently have targeted yeah. and their level and health. And so, you know, as you target different characters, you'll be able to get that breakdown. Yeah. The, uh, the halo over your head, whenever an enemy is about to an attack, it's, it's almost like you have a little bit of a sixth sense for those things that are coming. <laughs> um, if you see the halo, it means there's an incoming attack. And if you tap the triangle button by default, mm -hmm. then that you will be able to deflect that attack that comes in oh. and off with yeah. take. And okay. I love that yeah. deflect where it goes off and, and like hits things yeah. up yeah. and kind of breaks things off walls <laughs> too. But also, uh, if you hold the button, then it doesn't just it doesn't just deflect. It also deflects and turns around with a counter attack stupefy that actually stuns the enemy. And you can use that even in your combos and stuff. So yeah. if you're focused on a character, you know, and you're you're doing your thing, yes. and someone else attacks you, you can actually turn that attack into a direct attack on the person that you're comboing. Back into, into gameplay here, Andrew's gonna pretty pretty handily finish these these other students off here, win this duel. Look how fast it is. It's like a dance. <laughs> yeah, we really felt like the, um, we really felt like in the movies, there's almost like a, uh, it's kind of like a, there, there's call. this element of kind of like fencing from a very great yeah, distance. Yeah, that's and, a good call. And there are a lot of uh, a lot of things that we had to do with, with our controls and combat system in order to kind of that capitalize on that idea that's pretty unique to the Wizarding World. Hmm, yes. <laughs> well, perhaps you should try that next time. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance at winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. The next round is for all the gobstones, so to speak. And that is more or less going to wrap it up for us for now, for what we wanted to show you. No, Character no. creator, <laughs> tour of Hogwarts, and uh, just that, that little taste of combat. Uh, but we, we didn't want to leave you without well, maybe a little taste of something that that we're uh, we may show in the future, may show next time. Uh, you know, so leaving the castle, uh, going out here. Um. More more owls uh, confirmed. <laughs> owl mail. Oh, th there's the owlry again. Yes, all of the owls. Um, but yeah, just heading out here again to show you, like from Hogwarts to the world beyond Hogwarts. And oh, man. The, this is not somewhere where we're going today, but uh, we'll, we will definitely be taking you in the future. Oh my God. A little glimpse at the, the scale of the castle back there. All right, so we're gonna wrap things up here, but uh, I, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, everything that you've seen. But I think, James, you may have a few other questions here at the end of things. So yes. while we're done with uh, what we're showing on the gameplay <laughs> side, uh, I know there's a few things that you wanna pick Alan and Boston's brains about. I would <laughs> love that, because there's a lot. <laughs> Let me grab it. All right, so um, some of these questions we did pull from the community uh, secretly, but I did pull from the community. So, uh, and, and also from, I mean, going through this, I feel like they're, of, they're, yeah. you've, you've come up with some things you want to talk a little more about, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Elaborate on, because we went through character customization, Hogwarts itself, and even combat. So uh, this would be like for the both of you guys. Uh, will we be able to go back and change our character creation if we don't like it? Um, so not everything, but mm -hmm. there are certain things uh, with hairstyle, hair color. Uh, so kind of like core shapes, okay. you know, like okay. with the body and face, not after the fact. 
Okay. Um, but there are lots of things. There's kind of like a barber shop in Hogsmeade that you can go to. And <laughs> of course, inside there's a of wizard there, barber. You, right. yeah. <laughs> you could change your hair color for holidays or something, right? Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. <laughs> and the game features a lot of um, appearance customization mm -hmm. in it. So there's there's a ton of options there. Um, but that, that's, in terms of like your character and stuff that you have, mm -hmm. the character creator, it's mm -hmm. like, a, it's like a, a smaller set of what you saw there. Okay. Oh my gosh, awesome, awesome. Next question, what kind of leisurely activity can we do, uh, can we study with our free time? I mean, what will we be doing just hanging out in Hogwarts? Um, because uh, as you progress through the game, there's a bunch of different missions that open up. Most yeah. of them are driven by different characters' personalities. You know, some of them want help getting up to hijinks or they want, some of them want to just explore secrets in the castle right, because right. there are new secrets in our castle to explore. And so, um, so I think uh, there's there's a bunch of things to do. And when it comes to class, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just kind of like the mainline stuff. There are kind of like extracurricular assignments, some of which are optional, some of which are are kind of like uh, blockers for main mission. Kind of like okay. you can't go on this mission right. until you have the spell. And then the spell is open, you Got know, it. the assignment and how you complete it yeah, with, yeah. with your professor. And so there are opportunities to, um, to study, so to speak, like right. with that. Right. But they're really, they do all take, take uh, the form of our mission structure. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier. Wow. Um, let's get into some combat right quick. Uh, do spells have different levels or are they all equal? Do spells have different levels or are they all equal? I'm trying to think of how to describe that. So each spell has kind of like its own core identity and mm -hmm. what it does in the game mm -hmm. uh, with regards to both kind of like puzzling, world exploration, and and enemy combat and all that kind of stuff. Right. And then it's through the talent system, okay. right? Okay. When you go okay. into that, it's kind of like each of those spells has ways to kind of like advance and grow and change. Okay. And as you spend talents, in some cases it even changes like the way you approach the the battlefield mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. so i i'd say that's no more true than with like dark arts for example right. and as you go down that line and you kind of play around with those talents it really does start to kind of like affect even how you approach yeah. combat and how you think about the battlefield i won't be touching the dark <laughs> art stuff but i know many of you guys will be maybe on your second play <laughs> yeah through? second play through yes okay. dark hufflepuff <laughs> coming hashtag soon um, <laughs> Um, I want to close off with this question, and I, this is be for everybody, and we'll start with Boston. Um, with this game that you guys have been working on for however long, and the excitement you guys have, what's one aspect of Hogwarts Legacy that you are excited for the fans to experience, Boston? I think I'm just excited for the fans to play through the world, specifically the castle, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe go read those books again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that either whether you're already a fan and, you know, love this game or this is your first introduction into the world, I, I hope they just point at each other in the best way possible. And um, I'm just excited for fans to get to finally go to Hogwarts and yeah, feel yeah. like they can own it and live there. I've lived there for five years. It's a, it's a great place to live. <laughs> Official fifth year. I, uh, it, it's, it's really funny because because I my <laughs> I want to give a different answer and I will. Yeah. Uh, but but I actually feel like the most honest answer is really similar. Um, mm. Because my favorite thing when you know when running around playing the game and getting to know you know Hogwarts the way. Austin yeah. knows it because she knows the school and yeah. the lore better than I do. And thank God, right? Because you want the person architecting it to really yeah. know that. Yeah. But um, when I when I rewatch the films or or I'm rereading passages from the books, mm -hmm. there's a different relationship to those things having played the game. Right. And so right. it's really looking over the edge yeah. and seeing seeing location. I'm like, oh my God, I'm right there. And in the movie saying, I know what's around that corner <laughs> in the film. Like yeah. if you go down this way, yeah. there's actually yeah. a thing over here mm -hmm. and there's this person over here and right. this thing happened. And, <laughs> and it just adds all this richness to everything that you already love. And not just that, but you're going to add your own story. Yeah. So you know what happens around that corner because you did something. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the, the quick Great answer, point. just to have something different, is I just love being on a broom. <laughs> I just love <laughs> looking at the whole world and just being like, okay, I can just go. I can go there. And that vantage point, yeah. It's, there's just something exhilarating about it yeah. that feels very different in that kind of open air and on that thing. It's just like, it's kind of incredible, yeah. 
and, and wrapping it up, uh, you know, for me, it's just bringing the community together with it and <laughs> sharing those stories because mm -hmm. it is your story and you, you are going to be writing, you know, this, this is your unique experience within this. And even within the things that are the same, it's going to be your unique experience is different yeah. from mine is different yeah. from, we're all approaching it from different places. And uh, I think that's going to be really cool the way that everybody brings those things together. All right. And that's everything that we have to show you today. I know maybe it wasn't everything you wanted to see, but it was a whole lot of stuff. Character creator, a uh, uh, little mini tour of Hogwarts there, just a small part of it, a little bit of combat. Um, and we've, we do have some more stuff coming up for you in the future. Hogwarts Legacy releases on February 10th, 2023, and is available for pre-order now. Uh, but that's gonna do it from us. We're gonna leave you with a little something else, but for now, uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
as well, there's lots to lots to explore on the ground, and so kind of keeping you down at the ground level. And to me, it feels so. like it's got this kind of surfing vibe over the. Yeah. Over <laughs> oh my the God, like I'm just like I want to snatch the controller from Andrew right now because I want to go to the mountaintop, I'm going into that forest, and to that hamlet, or well, well, I, I don't know if that's how it's called. <laughs> I think that's what it is. No, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're gonna we're actually gonna land here, and I I feel like. I feel like that you call it a hamlet is 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 just perfect, just because that's what we refer to it <laughs> as. And so, uh, we all know from lore that Hogsmeade is the only all wizarding village within Britain. But we wanted other opportunities to kind of meet other characters out here yeah. and to kind of populate the landscape, so it's not just kind of you know barren as you leave out this direction and that direction. And so we just imagine these different dwellings, these different smaller locations that that wizards might live in out in the Scottish Highlands. And so it's those. Uh, and so we refer to those as hamlets, and they're opportunities to learn those wizard stories, um, how those different locations have kind of like learned to live, what their relationships are with characters at Hogsmeade and Hogwarts. And so they're both quest opportunities out here and a chance to kind of get to know more of the area, even beyond Hogwarts and Hogsmeade that we've already experienced. And you'll also notice on the mini-map, like lots of little icons, and each one of those represent gameplay in, in the hamlets that you can participate in, you know, whether it's a vendor or different puzzles and challenges or different secrets that exist. Um, each one of those icons are different opportunities for gameplay. And you'll notice that, that same thing as we venture out into the open world as well. So when you go out into the open world and you see, see those icons, whether they're on the mini-map or on your map or off in the distance, those things are opportunities to say, like, I want to increase my inventory capacity. There are puzzles left behind by old wizards, you know, that you can solve that actually grant you those. Uh, if you see ruins off in, the, off in the distance and you visit them, you might find opportunities to actually expand and learn about your ancient magic. And as you and as you kind of encounter different enemies dotted on the landscape, sometimes those characters, uh, poachers or dark wizards, might be hoarding different uh, magical resources that are valuable to you as you're playing the game. So each one has kind of like a way to connect to our gameplay loops and provide different opportunities that just kind of reward you for poking around. Them. I mean, I right away when I want to just cover all of those <laughs> points on the map, just been going over there. Well, well we've flown on a broom already, but there is something that we haven't done so far, and that is uh, getting on our flying mount. Um, we're gonna hop on our Onyx Hippogriff here. The Onyx Hippogriff is our pre-order bonus. Oh my God, there he just like pops out of the, <laughs> the back. Oh wait, you can use it as a horsey? I mean, a horse, I mean, that is a, a horse. <laughs> yeah, um, as a Hippogriff, you can, you can totally ride it like a ground mount and you can lift off into the air. And we tried to make sure that each, each each of those interactions, so the broom's really good at reaching that top speed, at, at kind of traveling the world as quickly as possible. But sometimes it's really nice to get on the Hippogriff because of that ground speed uh, or those transitions. Uh, and sometimes it just feels amazing just to be riding around on a Hippogriff. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it really is kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's a great feeling being on it. And it's a great feeling managing those transitions, kind of going from run to fly and just being able to go wherever you want. And we tried to make sure that that, the, that each one of these things that you can interact with have, have a unique identity and a reason for being. Oh, and, oh my God, like I see like different like areas, like a swampy area. By the way, can you go to like entire map anywhere you go? Are there are regions that are like locked from you? Yeah, as soon, like... as, as soon as you, there's kind of a moment where the world kind of opens up to you outside of Hogwarts as a student. And right from that moment, uh, early on in the game, you can go wherever you want. And so you might find more difficult challenges in different areas. And you'll see different spots as Andrew's moving around, like you mentioned the swamp. Um, but there, we have got like a coast and we've got different types of environments out in the world just to kind of uh, pepper your experience, reward you for exploring, keep things fresh. Uh, all those things exist as we're moving around. So cool. I love that windmill. It's like so rustic. Like I keep forgetting that this is like 1800s. The Wizarding World we've never really seen before. <laughs> like it feels so authentic. Like it just, it, it, it's part of it. Yeah, I, I love this vista too. and and. I'm gonna have Andrew stop here. We're gonna use a bit of dev magic to uh, change the seasons. Actually, I want to see. I want you to see what this world looks like, uh, covered in snow. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, please. I love snow. That's all I want. Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! This is so beautiful. Oh my goodness! This is so pretty. Like, it looks so realistic. Oh my god, it changes the landscape like completely. Oh my god, does it have like actual like gameplay impact? Like impact on the gameplay? Or does it like it's just the weather of Scotland? 
Uh, yeah, we use it. We really use it as a narrative marker through through the game. So as you're progressing through your main storyline, it was important for us to kind of like have those moments that kind of felt like when you're reading the books or watching the movies, where you know you'll see kind of like the title card, winter, and, <laughs> and now the landscape has changed, and, and you're really feeling those that passage of time while you're a student, you know, going through your year at right. Hogwarts. And I think I think we wanted to duplicate that. And for me, it's really fun that it's not just on the outside, which which I, I agree, I think it looks really beautiful, um, but within the school as well. So there are moments like when it reaches certain holidays or things like that, where Hogsmeade oh, uh, reacts to God. holidays and the school reacts to holidays and you see the decorations around those environments change. Um, nice. That really helped just kind of make me feel like I'm there. Right. Yeah. And, oh, and it's, not just, uh, it's not just, you know, for the seasons, those, those kind of vibe things. Um, like we have a day-night cycle and that right. day-night cycle mm -hmm. It, even though similarly, like it's largely about vibe, when you go into Hogsmeade in the evening, there's less characters there. Uh, around the school, you'll notice it kind of dies down and quiets down. Oh, just when I mean, there's right, just yeah. candlelight and students kind of like as you're walking through the halls. But in that day night cycle is where we've kind of placed uh, a few items where, you know, whether or not you can collect them or whether or not you can interact with them with, that are a little bit restricted by the day night cycle. And I love Andrew's flying up here, really high up on the hippogriff. And, and we're just looking at this view of Hogwarts in the distance. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's part of what I love most about flying around in this game, whether it's on a hippogriff or, or, or on the broom. No, I, I mean, you talk about going anywhere and things that you can see in the distance, and that's one of my... I, I still can't get over, like, it, no matter... I play this so much, but I still, I still can't get over the fact that I can see Hogwarts out there, and there's just something beautiful about knowing that all of, all of the things inside of it, the classrooms, the students, the professors, um, all the places I can go, I can just fly my hippogriff, land in the courtyard, enter the front doors, and just walk, you know, to the library, to class, or to greenhouse, or to my common room. That it's all contiguous and just kind of like one, one space is still exciting to me after all. This I time. mean, I'm just, just, I'm <laughs> speechless right now. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's just, oh my god. As much as we want to spend a lot more time out here just flying around, experiencing the world, uh, I think this is a great opportunity to switch over to combat. And last time we gave you kind of a, an intro to combat, this time we're going to really go uh, a okay, lot more deeper. of a deep dive on uh, <laughs> using the Dark Arts Battle Arena, which is part of our Deluxe Edition. All right, Andrew's got us in the Forbidden Forest, which is where the Dark Arts Battle Arena is. Uh, which is part of the Deluxe and Digital Deluxe Edition. I, I, I love the way that the Dark Arts Battle Arena is actually uh, part of the world. It's integrated into the world. So your experience is more immersive than just choosing an option from, from the main menu of the game or something like that. Reason to go to the Forbidden Forest. Exactly. Well, there, there are many reasons <laughs> to go to the Forbidden Forest, but uh, he's also wearing the uh, Dark Arts Cosmetic set. Mm. And uh, here he's pulling out the Thestral, which is oh my part of that Dark Arts pack <laughs> from the Deluxe and Digital Deluxe Edition. So we're going full full Dark Arts here. Um, That's good. That's what I like going down. But I like this, uh, this battle arena. It is a great place to show off um, really combat in a big way because it unlocks some interesting abilities for you and, and allows you to, to uh, really play around with uh, combat in a, in a deep way. And is this like the only arena like this in the game where you can like practice? And yeah, do so in the, in the base game, we have uh, two combat arenas normally. That, and so everyone mm -hmm. has access to those. And each of the combat arenas are an opportunity to kind of just go through a difficult combat challenge, fight through multiple waves in order to uh, earn a, uh, a different cosmetic for your character and add that to your collection. Um, in the case of the, that's no different than the Dark Arts Battle Arena, that's also true, uh, the Combat Arena. But, uh, but uh, one of the things that we're excited about in the Dark Arts Battle Arena that people can do is, is you come in preloaded with different abilities. So uh, the Unforgivable Curses are something that everyone's going to have access to through the base game and going to be able to earn. Mm -hmm. And they can make choices in order to kind of like add that to their repertoire. And they can also commit to that down with certain talents and things like that. When you, when you play the Dark Arts Combat Arena, you actually have access to all those things as kind of like a, a way to test them all. And so it's a chance to kind of like tour and play with the Dark Arts and decide whether or not that is a path that you kind of want to go down. Um, but, but yeah, okay. everyone has the same ability to explore, explore the Dark Arts. This is just kind of like a way of previewing. And again, a great place for us to show off combat in general. Uh, so I think we're going to jump in here, Andrew's going to start, just start battling and we can start talking about uh, everything you're seeing on the screen. All right. 
<laughs> he just said about the cadavers right away. Oh my god. <laughs> we're, start, we're starting off strong. We're oh my god. Is that, is that, was that Kujio? Oh my god. That's so cool. Yeah, so that. You'll, you'll notice right away, like when we use Avada Kedavra, that guy's health bar went from instant to zero. And we really are trying to honor the way Avada Kedavra works in the game, uh, even in some pretty extreme situations. Um, you'll notice that like the the meter takes up a, a lot longer to yeah, a little uh, cool kind down. of build up as a way to kind of deal with its extreme power, just so that it's still fun to use. And then there's some some ways that we'll probably talk about to 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 adjust that. But I don't know. I, I don't know if there are things on the screen that you just have questions about. Well, like, we're, like I see like little blue things pop, uh, pop <laughs> from yeah. the enemies. <laughs> also, before, like that sign. Well, it's like so in the community we call it the ancient magic sign. And I don't know if that's how it's called. Yeah. <laughs> in the game. <laughs> so the community is astute. So uh, on the development side and in player facing in the game, we reference that as your ancient magic meter. Oh, <laughs> so it is ancient magic. <laughs> that is. Yeah. So. As your, as your abilities in the game keep growing and you become exposed to some of the secrets about your own kind of history and your own, your own abilities, um, you start unlocking new powers. So one of those powers, you'll see the R1 button appearing uh, throughout the game. Uh, that's an ancient magic throw, we call it, that allows you to kind of like draw an object to you and fling it at an enemy. Um, okay. But whenever you see the R1 or the L1 plus R1 appear over somebody's head, mm -hmm. um, that's an ability to cast a, a very devastating and powerful uh, ancient magic spell oh, to do a ton of damage against the character. I see, I see. And the way that manifests itself uh, depends on the type of enemy that you're fighting. And you'll see a, a wide variety of enemies in here that are pressuring the player in different ways. You'll notice there's there's uh, abilities that kind of bubble up under the player as he's fighting that force him to move. And there's different ways that we want the player to kind of move around on the battlefield. And that's actually a good link to the Ancient Magic meter in general. And the reason I say that is because as you're doing different things in combat, you're protegoing and you're doing different abilities and you can kind of spec into it with your talents, there are different ways to get that meter to build faster and faster. But one of the most effective base ways to build up that meter fast, that way you can launch these devastating attacks whenever you want to, is, is to actually perform combos. So you see that combo up here, and it's almost like your your emotions are building up, and then basically that builds up enough that you can attack someone. But as the combo meter builds up, at some point you strike someone and a, a piece of their magic kind of falls out of them. You'll see these blue orbs in, in the in the game world, and there's something that only you can see in, in the narrative, in the world. And it's another reason to move around on the battlefield. If you can go up and collect those things, and, but them in, they give big, big jumps to that ancient magic meter as we're playing. We're talking a lot about uh, about spells uh, and magic here, but I think there's another huge component of combat, and that is the the tools that you can bring to combat as well to kind of uh, change the way you play. And I think Mackenzie uh, knows a lot about what's going on with the plants yeah. and potions. And so the the tools are really interesting because they're basically like a prior investment. So you can bring the potions and the plants that you grow in the room of requirement to combat uh, to essentially kind of help you um, defeat enemies a lot quicker and, and more efficiently. So some of the tools that you'll see here are like the rock skin potion. So uh -huh. that is something that basically it covers your skin in this like rocky material that uh, reduces the incoming damage that you're receiving. So against big enemies, hard hitting enemies like trolls, um, that's super helpful. <laughs> um, it's oh my god, she's <laughs> just destroying. The, the troll just collapsed from one of the kid uh, Obviously we have the Wigan Will potion as well, uh, which increases your health. And then we have the focus potion. So when Alan talks about having to balance Avada Kedavra with a long cooldown, because obviously it's an instant kill, uh, one thing that you could do is brew a focus potion, and that will increase um, how quickly your your cooldowns uh, regain. Right. Oh my god. There's just so much like a, a versatility, like in what the character is doing to the troll right now. Like he's just bouncing around around the arena. He's like not. And the troll makes him move around too, looks like. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that our plants are violent. <laughs> yes, and so that's like, when we're talking about the, almost the uh, setup of the arena, you also have plants that you can fight with. And so we have things like the venomous tentacula that you can put down and it acts like a turret and it just kind of shoots enemies around the battlefield. That is so cool. This is like a truly like Hufflepuffian way to approach <laughs> the battle. Exactly. Yes. No, that was super important to us, that there were these like multiple ways. And so you can see there's there's a ton of different things that you can use. Uh, the Mandrake is one, so you can pull it out and it stuns with its like piercing cry, these enemies uh, in, in a radius. 
And another thing I want to call out uh, that we're seeing on the side of the screen here is these, these dueling feats, which I, I love because I love anything that prompts me to play a game in a different way, a unique way. I don't want to get stuck in my style, you know? Uh, and, and so this is a way to, if you want to get stuck in your style, go for it. If you just want to blast people with spells, go for it. But we also want to uh, have some things over here that may make you use certain plants or certain potions or block more or... Yeah, we mentioned the field guide challenges um, uh, in the prior stream. And the field guide challenges, this is the way that the field guide manifests like challenges for you to do in combat. And exactly to your point, um, we just wanted a way to encourage players to, to explore the different systems, to help them decide, to just kind of practice with them and explore what they want to do. Because there really are so many different ways that you can push talents. Uh, when you see the, the green X's on characters, that's right. and that's kind of, a, through your talents, you can unlock this kind of cursing mechanic that sort of like links the fates of these different characters on the battlefield. That way, uh, as you get the, the, as you're cursing different characters, they all begin sharing damage. And so, we have things like Avada Kedavra, which is the insta-kill, but if you curse everyone before you insta-kill this one guy, they can all drop dead for that kind of ultimate golden war fantasy. And so oh my God. <laughs> there, are, there are Dark Arts fantasies, there's fantasies about being more of a defense against the Dark Arts character, things like that, that misty step that you see um, occasionally being used on the battlefield. And we can also spec into our potions and plants to make them more powerful and more efficacious. So it's wow. all about which type of player you feel like you are and whether or not you want to play with prep on the fly or with deliberation. And those are all different options. That is so cool because like it's like I see so much like going on on the screen, just so much complexity. And I, I want to just try it myself, like which style works best. I mean, I feel like it's the dark arts is going to be the easiest <laughs> route, but I, you're, that you're ancient audience. magic, to be honest, feels like much more powerful than just the dark arts. Yeah. And speaking of plants and potions, we are going to be putting the dark arts away, put those unforgivable Aww. curses away, uh, and heading to the Room of Requirement, which is your home within Hogwarts, a personalizable space uh, that actually has some utility as well, where you get to brew things and grow things and uh, uh, also care for some beasts. <laughs> All right, Andrew's got us in the Room of Requirement uh, wearing, we, we kind of went casual mode on the outfit here, wearing a nice jumper. Um, and, and I think that's a, a good jumping off point, jumping off point, uh, <laughs> for uh, the personalization of the space as well. Not just your character and, and the visuals of your character, but actually this space is a, a place that you can make your own. Um, yeah, it was super important to us that this space really did feel like um, your reflection uh, as a wizard. So you can change the architecture in here. What? Uh, <laughs> different themes throughout, uh, starkly different themes uh, to really just hammer home that this is this is yours. You oh my God, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is beautiful. We never expected that to be, oh my God. That's the thing is not only can you change the architecture here, but you can actually conjure little objects uh, into this space, as you can see. So. You know, there's like statues that you can do and ornaments and tables and rugs and just a bunch of little things that really flesh out the space and bring it to life. Oh my goodness, because like we, we had an idea that those places where you brew stuff, that's where you can change, but you can do all of this. Where do you even get this stuff? Like there's a furniture store? In <laughs> yeah, so we call them conjurations. Uh, and the conjuration recipes can be purchased at Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade. Um, but also as you engage in different types of gameplay throughout the world, you'll be rewarded with uh, different objects. That's so cool. And you change color? Mm -hmm. You can change the color, you can change the size of it, and you can place it basically anywhere. Oh, oh my god, it's so tiny! <laughs> it's like for baby Niffler. <laughs> and I love how the, the system too is designed, it, it's not mechanical, it's immersive. Mm -hmm. And so you get the magical effect of conjuring it in and you're you're... You're actually doing this in the world as your character, but it, the, the way you blended like that gameplay with yeah. the, the immersive uh, uh, design of personalizing oh the space. Oh my god! Like, and I love the animation how it like appears. You know, like it's not just like there. It's like it almost like mm -hmm. it apparates. It is really quite beautiful, and that was the thing is we wanted that to look really nice because the magic in the wizarding world is everywhere. It's it's physical, it's kinetic, and it's whimsical. And we really wanted to nail that whimsy in the space. Uh, another thing that I wanted to discuss is that not only can you like conjure things and you can change their their look, but you can do that with the utility objects as well. So you can see that we have planting pots and potion stations, and you can change the look of those uh, as well. 
And these are the areas where, as we had mentioned previously, you'll be growing your plants, you'll be brewing your potions. Right, 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 right. So while you're also doing these uh, like kind of nurturing based activities, this is also the space uh, where you would bring your gear, gear to be identified and gear to have um, like rates put on it, which I believe Alan can talk to. Oh, yeah. Um, I, we keep bringing up appearance and, and how it looks. And, and on a, like uh, in the game, you can look like anything you want to whenever you want to. Um, but the player will be finding different types of gear that we call it uh, as you progress through the game. Mm -hmm. And essentially, we just know that that clothes and different items in the wizarding world can have different magical properties. And as you uh, as you explore and as you adventure and as you defeat enemies, you're going to be finding different pieces of gear um, that have different abilities and that can help you in your journey and are a major part of you kind of growing as a wizard and advancing as a wizard. Oh, and so there's a huge list. <laughs> <laughs> and not all the time, uh, whenever, whenever you get a new piece of gear, you don't necessarily know exactly what it does. And so there is a station inside of the room of requirement that you can conjure. It's one of the first things you conjure uh, called an identification station where you can actually bring that, that gear that you're uncertain about and learn what its abilities are. Right, yeah, that's so cool. And then as this space advances even further and the space will eventually grow its own rooms and you're gonna get new recipes, you know, like, like Mackenzie's talking about, all these different things keep expanding. And as it expands, eventually you're going to earn what we see here, which is called a loom. And when you set up a loom, it's a, an ability to essentially customize exactly which magical properties are on your gear and take any piece of gear and adjust its properties and to tweak what it does. And I mentioned earlier that, that you can make anything look like anything. The collection of, of, cus, uh, of um, appearances, we call it, mm -hmm. or um, cosmetics, we've been referring to it right. in this stream. Those types of things you can use and you can apply a look to any other other look. So if you get a piece of gear, you put it on, you look like that, but you can change it to look like whatever you want. That's so cool. And, and it, like you just you can just put some ability to the sweater, but then you can just swap yeah. that ability. Yep. And uh, appearances you can edit whenever you want in the gear screen. The loom is specifically about applying uh, traits. And, and applying uh, larger upgrades that just kind of grant you greater statistical advantage or give you really specific abilities that w blend in nicely with where you're trying to go with your combat fantasy or talents and things like that. Interesting. I'm just like, I'm just seeing that, that they're just like pumpkin fur, moon cuff fur. What, where does that come <laughs> from? Yeah. And so you'll notice that the ingredients that are used to add traits uh, and to upgrade your gear uh, are based around beasts. So this is where we get into the beast care uh, section, which is inside this vivario, oh. kind of bigger space on the inside idea. And so you can see here we have a couple of beasts out. We have a grap horn and a moon calf <laughs> and a niffler uh, and a kneesel as well. So oh uh, quite god. a variety. <laughs> oh my god, he's just like a big puppy. <laughs> they're I so love their cuddling. <laughs> oh my god, they're together. Oh, that's so cute. They are adorable. And so part of beast care uh, is petting them as well, but feeding them too. And so once you do those things, that's when they feel safe enough that they can, they'll give you their, their magical ingredients. So mooncalf fur, um, niffler fur, etc., cetera, uh, that can then be used in your, in your gear. That is like so like intuitive because like, you know, that makes sense because when you touch the animals, you get some fur mm -hmm. leftovers. That's so, oh my God. Yeah, and we really want to hammer home the fact that this is like a home that you're making for them. So in the overland, you can find these beast dens uh, and rescue these beasts. Part of doing so is crushing them and feeding them <laughs> food as well, uh, and to build that relationship with, with your beast. In addition to be able to care for beasts, you can actually uh, conjure things in this space as well. Uh, the house, the cottage. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> And so we have like a lot of little ornaments uh, in this area. And a lot of them are purely cosmetic, but they look really cool. Again, it's the personalization uh, of this space. Oh my goodness. No, this is like, I'm going to spend eight hours <laughs> just designing <laughs> this whole area to personalize. This is like cool. It's like you have this little play area, like a, a personalized fish tank, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> just for the creatures, I love it. Yeah, no, totally. And there's like a decoration aspect, but there's also, we, we were saying inside uh, as well, is there's a utili uh, utility aspect to it oh. too. So as you uh, progress in the game and you're able to purchase more conjurations, you're able to speed up your process. So one of them, for example, is the food processor, which uh, 
It allows for the beasts in the space to automatically get feed, so you don't have to do it manually. Uh, and so you're, you're really building the progression for yourself here. Um, in addition, there's also a toy box where you can, oh, <laughs> where you can play with your beasts. You'll see here, yeah. So you can, um, there's a bunch of toys in it, uh, and each beast has their own favorite toy. So as you can imagine, the moon calf really likes the moon ball, uh, or the needle <laughs> as like a little cat really likes to chase the yarn ball as well. Right. <laughs> and they're oh super cute. Oh my God. Watching them, it's so cute. <laughs> And the big thing we really wanted to hammer home uh, is that the world is a dangerous place. And so by going and rescuing these beasts and bringing back them back here uh, and caring for them, you're really helping helping them out. There's poachers in the overland uh, who want to who hunt these beasts for their material. So instead, you're you're caring for them. You're giving them a home. Right. Oh my God, this grab horn is just gigantic. <laughs> But he looks like my dog. My <laughs> dog right now, for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, you could actually name them as well. So, like yeah. your dog. So, getting back into that personalization, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, we we didn't want you to just like throw in, oh, here's a here's a grab horn in here. Like, this can be named whatever Andrew's about to name them. Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> the good name. Nice. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we've we've created this really nice space, and and uh, you you can get additional vivariums, correct? Uh, it's a different kind of aesthetics and looks to where you're keeping yeah. your beasts and caring for them. Progression is a big part of this space as well. So, as you progress through the story, uh, you will unlock more vivariums. So, as you can see, this one's quite meadow themed, um, big, open, bright. Uh, but there's other ones, say like a swamp that you might encounter, um, and it's really a visual effect to uh, and more space for for your beast. Oh, so it's like those so when we're inside the room requirement. There's like on the left, there's that moon glow from one entrance and then some shrubbery going on in the right. Is that what you're talking about? Yep, that's exactly it. Ah, oh, you put trees in here too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and another thing with the, the beast care that I think is, is great, uh, you know, tying back to the same kind of thing that you did with like the broom, where the broom is not just a, a method of travel, it's, it's actually built in and integrated into the world. In the same way, like beast care isn't just this this added element. You're not just throwing it on top. There's really this like narrative and, and integration to yeah, everything, everything connects. So as you progress through the missions, you'll expand the space. Um, as you earn resources, you'll go into Hogsmeade and, and use them to uh, unlock the gameplay here and, and unlock new conjurations and different things to play around with. In the open world, uh, it's in those different um, in those different environments, like the different combat and conflicts and bandit camps and different things like that that exist in the Overland. Those things are what hold recipes uh, that exist in the loom. So all these things have a way of connecting. Um, moonstone that you find out in the world is the resource that we use to conjure everything that's found throughout the world. Um, forgeables are used for recipes. So really everything's like a everything's like a cycle and keeps you coming back. But even with the story that's being told too, I, you know, I think people know who Poppy is and and uh, that she has a particular affinity for beasts. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think everything we're seeing here, you know, you're going to be venturing out into the world, uh, and and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, even even of kind of like your interactions with beasts in that narrative. So you know, you bringing up Poppy, there are more there are more uh, kind of mysteries to discover and things to discover out in the world that have to do with her and that have to do with caring for beasts. And so different characters have their own have their own stuff uh, uh, that that just kind of make this all just kind of like the beginning, the, be the beginning of your journey. Well, we could spend hours in here, but we're gonna have to end the stream now. What do you think <laughs> about what you've seen today? I mean, this is, I'm just so blown away by how how beautiful it looks. The open world seems so detailed and there's so many things to do and like the combat, we're gonna have, we're gonna spend like two weeks or more just breaking it down by pieces. There's just so much to this world. Like I'm so happy you guys did this overall gameplay. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got more for you to discover and find on your own. <laughs> Thank you for so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Hogwarts Legacy is available for pre-order now. It releases February 10th with 72-hour early access for owners of the Collector's Deluxe and Digital Deluxe Edition. We're gonna wrap things up, but first we've got a little surprise for you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>